Welcome to Country Club United Methodist Church. My name is Jim Murray. Please join me for this morning's call to worship. Christ is risen from the dead. The spirit is poured out. Lives are transformed. God, God is, is active, active in, in our world, world bringing, bringing hope, hope and, and healing. healing. We are called to see beyond ourselves and to join in loving care for all those around us. We accept God's call, and, and we rejoice in the gift of community. The whole of God's creation is groaning, crying out in pain. We name the earth as part of our community. We extend our love to all of God's creation. People of faith, gather now to be transformed by God's compassionate love. We praise with joy the world's creator, God of justice, love, and peace.
Please join me in the opening prayer. Merciful God, in your gracious presence, we confess our sin and the sin of this world. Although Christ is risen from the grave and has shattered the power of death, we are still held captive by fear and doubt. In our pursuit of the good life, we have gone along with injustice. We have ignored the cries of the oppressed. We pursue profits and pleasures that harm the land and pollute the waters. We have squandered the earth's gifts on technologies of destruction. Have mercy on us, O God. Help us to trust your power to change our lives and make us new, that we and all your creatures may know the joy of life abundant given through Jesus Christ, the risen Lord. Amen. My name is Keith Morgan. I'm the pastor at, here at Country Club United Methodist Church. And today we're celebrating Earth Day. All that we do in our service is related to that. This past week on April 22nd was the Earth Day, and it celebrated its 50th anniversary. And so we celebrate today. We continue now in an attitude of prayer. And I would invite you to take just a moment of silence. And in that silence, you can lift up your prayers of concern or simply rest in God's presence. And then I will join us all together in prayer and we'll close with the Lord's Prayer. Will you join me in silence? We give you thanks and praise, O God of creation, for the grandeur of all that you have made, for the healing waters of creation, which bring pleasure and health, purity and life, for the richness of the good earth that brings forth fruits and flowers, a pleasure to taste and a joy to behold, for the soaring birds of the air, the crawling creatures on the earth, the gliding fishes in the sea, for all creatures great and small with whom we share this precious web of life, for the invigorating sunlight of day, the deepening mystery of night, the wonder of the stars, and the call of the unknown in the universe, we thank you, O God. May we always walk gently upon the earth in right relationship, nurtured by your love, opened to the wind of your spirit, taking only what we need, always open to the needs of others making choices that bring well-being, living with generosity, striving for justice, honoring all with reverence, reconciling and peacemaking, mindful of those who will come after, recognizing our proper place as part of your creation. Help us to live at peace with the earth aware that what we do can create lasting consequences. Help us not to abuse the resources of the earth and not to create problems for future generations. Grant us the strength and courage, Lord, to be wise stewards of the earth and all of creation. We lift this prayer and all of our prayers in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ who also taught us to pray by saying, Our Father in heaven, holy is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. 
For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Delaney Dunn here to share a children's message today 
and this young lady is uh, is going to be in uh, eighth, ninth grade next year, uh, and uh, so she um, has in her past done lots of environmental projects, like I think you probably have too. And I just was wondering, Delaney, if you could tell me about some of the good things that you have done um, that you remember and are kind of proud of that were helpful to the environment. First off, the one that comes to mind is um, Blue River Cleanup. So I know that it's been postponed because of the virus, but something really great about it is that I had my Girl Scout troop there and I actually did the cleanup with my uh, church, you guys. So a, the really good thing about it is that there's this just community that's cleaning up this whole big area. And it just kind of makes you feel good that you're doing such a, you're a part in all this big project. Uh, it, it, it really is wonderful. Um, our church has done that for many years and I'm always proud of it too, Delaney. Um, it's something we do together. All the generations can do it together. So are there other things that you've taken part of uh, in that you're remembering that you're kind of pleased about doing? Um, about a few months ago, in, last year in October, um, you, <laughs> Grandpa, Mom and I planted trees out on our land. And it was really fun and tiring, but <laughs> we planted them and they, most of them still look healthy. And yeah, I'm proud of that one because it was hard work, but once you get it done, you're like, woo! Well, I was especially proud of it because uh, uh, we three all are part of Drawdown and we try to think of some positive projects. And um, I can't think of anything better than planting trees to help the earth. I can't wait to see them get big and, you know. I can't either. Awesome. You know, one of the things I know about you is that you love to walk. And you're, <laughs> you're yeah. always walking. You walk to the plaza, you round, walk around your neighborhood, you walk with your friends, you play. And I talk a little bit about what that means to you, honey. So, walking is just awesome because you get exercise and you get to get out of the house. And even though you're in the city, there's still lots of nature around you. Like that house over there, look at all those nice flowers, man. You get to walk by flowers <laughs> and trees. And it's just, it's really nice because you don't have to be locked up in your house. So during this time, I go out and walk around my park a lot because I'm really bored. So walking <laughs> is a good, is a, is good exercise and it's just something that you can do whenever you feel like you need to get out or experience nature in a way. Well, you know, I know our, ki our children love to do play outdoors and, and be out, and that is one of the positive things that we can do right now. And, um, well, we're awfully proud of you, and we're awfully proud of all the good things that our children participate in with their youth groups and with their schools to help the environment. I know we're all very proud of each other. Our scripture today is from Genesis, chapter 1, verses 27 through 31 and chapter 2, verse 15. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them, and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, See, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw everything that he had made, and indeed, it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Chapter 2, verse 15. 
The Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to till it and keep it. The Word of God for the people of God. Thanks Thanks be be to God. God. As I mentioned earlier, today we're celebrating uh, Earth Sunday or uh, Earth Day. This past week was April 22nd. And uh, as it is the 50th anniversary. And so to do something a little special today, I've asked uh, Carol Mel and Holly Mel if they would share uh, some of their experiences, some of their passion towards caring for this earth. I think we all know uh, how much they have done in environmental protection and different things. And so it, it, it'll be a delight to hear and share with them this morning as well. Will you pray with me? Oh God, open our hearts, open our minds, that we might hear you speak to us, that some truth we discover today can become a part of our lives from now on. In your name we pray, amen. God's green earth is a wonderful place to live, isn't it? Have you stopped to think about the privilege we have in living in such a beautiful environment? I know over the past few weeks, Karen and I have tried to walk around the neighborhoods and the parks whenever we can, and we've enjoyed the spring blooming all around us and the trees turning green. And it, always, it is always bringing to mind the wonder of creation. God's green earth is an incredible place for us to live. But with privilege comes responsibility. I want us to think about the responsibility we have to care for God's green earth. I want us to realize that even though this matter of the environment has become a politicized issue, and even though it's been taken up taken up in some respects by those who worship the earth, this is really our issue. I fear sometimes as followers of Christ, we've given it up when we as the church ought to be taking the lead. As men and women committed to the gospel of Jesus Christ and to Scripture, we ought to be taking the lead in this matter of caring for God's earth and respecting the environment that God has given to us. It's part of our mission. You might say, I don't see the connection. Our mission is to make disciples for Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. God's put us here to save people, not to save the earth. I'd like to read for you a statement from an Old Testament scholar, Christopher Wright who's written a fine book called The Mission of God. Listen to what he said. The church in its mission must bear witness to the great biblical claim that the earth is the Lord's and must care for the earth as an act of love and obedience to its creator and redeemer. Wright goes on to say, If the greatest commandment is that we ought to love God, That surely implies that we should treat what belongs to God with honor, care, and respect. And Wright also notes that what benefits creation is also good for human beings. So that means that care for creation is not only an act of loving God, but it's an act of loving our neighbor. It's the heart of the Christian mission, the command to love God and neighbor. So with that in mind, I would like us to think first about Scripture and what it informs us about care for God's earth. And by the time we're done, secondly, I want us to be able to answer the question, what on God's green earth are you and I supposed to do, especially with respect to the environment? We begin with a small portion of the creation story of Genesis. 
In the passage that we read today, God makes the human being in God's image. In the image of God, God created it. Male and female, God created them. This God is the God who is in the process here of making a world balanced, ordered, structured, and designed. It is the God whom you and I mirror. Therefore, when the text goes on to say that we humans are to have dominion over all the creatures of the land, water, and air, and to subdue the land made by God, those powerful images must always be employed in the bright light of the reality that we act as mirrors of God. Images. We were made in the image of God. Not as free agents of our own human desires. And then in our reading from Genesis 2, the 15th verse, we read, God took the man and placed him in the Garden of Eden to till and keep it. But the Hebrew words more basic meaning here is to serve it and to protect it. The image is that we are partners with God and with God's creation, not masters, not dominators. The image of partner in God's world has the possibility to make us new creatures, helping us to see our rightful place as God's helpers for the world. The world, the cosmos, is not our oyster. Rather, it is God's pearl. And we are assigned the twin tasks of serving this pearl and protecting it from all abuse, especially abuse from ourselves. Carol, you and Holly always have a wonderful outlook and insightful way of looking at the environment. How do you understand our calling to care for the earth? Good morning. I am so glad to be with you on this Earth Sunday. I love to talk to people about my passion, the environment. It is truly my avocation. I'd like to tell you how I got to be involved and how I came to care. When I was about 15 years old, my family camped up on Lake Huron. And after we had set up our tent, we began walking the area and around the next cove, we found a massive fish kill dead and rotting fish lying all over the beach. Ah, uh, perhaps this was caused by some toxic waste dump by a factory or maybe even a municipal waste dump of, of sewage. It's hard to say, maybe all of the above. Each of us does know the negative effects of a poorly managed environment. We're seeing it all around us every day. So yes, there are natural causes. But most of the causes for a warming climate are human caused, and we have to own that. So on this day, on this Earth Sunday, rather than to focus on the negatives, we have this beauty around us. So let's focus on that. And let's focus on the opportunities this brings to us. Yes, opportunities. Hi, church family. I miss seeing you and I hope I will see you again soon. I hope you had a good Earth Week. I'm not worried about this being the end of Earth Week and our message coming to you late because every week is Earth Week. Earth stewardship is an everyday thing. I tend to carry the weight of what's happening to our Earth on my shoulders, but you don't have to be like me to do your part. All of us have the ability to be good stewards. Stewardship is when humans are responsible for taking care of the world. I believe we are called to manage the creation's resources responsibly, and there is a great need to do so. Somewhere in Genesis 2, it says that God took man, humans, and put him, us, into the Garden of Eden 
to dress it and keep it. The last two words, keep it, to me indicate sustainability, which means managing it in a way that it will still be here for others later, that it will be sustained. And I often wonder if I were to visit the beautiful place deep in the Ozarks where my family camped during summers, that it won't be the same as it was back then, that something got developed there or the water in the springs and streams where we swam has become polluted. Did humans do their job to sustain that area? It is our job as the people of God's creation to make sure we keep and sustain what God has given us. Improving the environment is a huge endeavor with so many areas to cover, uh, but our individual consumption is the focus for today. If you consume less, you save energy and resources, and you reduce waste, all of which reduces your impact. Lowering consumption essentially reduces the carbon you contribute to the atmosphere. As a Christian, I pray about this and I ask God to help me uh, to do all I can and to influence others as well. We all impact the earth, so it's all of our jobs to reduce our impact. Before I can cover consumption, one of the most obvious things you can do to help the earth is by supporting an environmental organization like uh, the um, Environmental Defense Fund, Nature Conservancy, or Earth Justice. How do we care for the earth? Holly mentioned the idea of consuming less. That is one thing that we can do. Let me give you some starting points. To conserve, to consume less. If we could do that, that would take care of many problems. Simple things like turning off lights, turning up the thermostat in the summer when the air conditioning is on, and turning it down in the winter when the heat is on. Things like saving fuel, saving paper. We're not talking about not using electricity or living in a grass hut somewhere, but consuming less. Can we think about ways that we might be able to do that? Have you noticed through this time of being constantly at home that you've found ways of being more efficient with what you have? It's a bit harder right now to get everything we think we want and need, but have you found that living with what you have is, isn't so bad? We don't need as much as we thought we did. I don't have to be a huge consumer to enjoy my life, and I can try my best to reduce where I can to help the earth. Like in our home, if we're not in an area of the house, lights are off in that area. All of these actions, by the way, are things that save money. So being home most of the time now, it is the perfect time to do a few things to make your home more efficient, which will save energy and save air quality. We have a Nest thermostat, which is programmable, which you see on the wall back there. It has an eco setting and you can set it to produce lower amounts of heating and cooling when you're not home, for example, if that's ever going to happen, right? Your utility has information on these thermostats and I think that most of them will install them for free. One of the easiest things you can do is switch out all your lighting to these LED bulbs. They use 75% less energy than an incandescent bulb and they last 25 times longer. And these don't have mercury in them like fluorescent bulbs do, so you don't have to worry about disposal. Uh, make sure your attic has good insulation. It's going to save you hundreds of dollars and also put insulation around your rim joists in the basement. Uh, it is pretty, pretty easy to stuff insulation in the cavities around the edges of your house where your floorboards sit on your foundation and it will keep the cold out. Um, I love this one. At our house, we pay our power bill through a company called Arcadia. It is the same amount that we would pay directly to our power company, but 50% of our bill pays for credits that fund wind-produced power. So essentially 50% of our power comes from wind. There are other programs like this, so look into it through your uh, power company. Um, and when you go out, plan your trips so you're not doing everything you need in, um, in several outings but in one outing. You can go to the grocery store, the post office, the gas station, and you know wherever else the pharmacy and um, kill all those birds with one stone essentially in one efficient trip and you can even do a lot of things you need to do through walking thank you cat then let's consider recycle i know most people are rolling their eyes because 
you may be tired of seeing these recycle signs. Everybody's recycling, and it seems like a fad. But that's one of the ways we can carry out this mandate. Every time I see those blue recycle bins, I'm convicted because sometimes I get lazy and just throw it in the big trash dumpster. I don't want to take the time to sort it out. We can also reuse things by donating them. Many organizations can use things that we would be tempted to discard. Why create more production of the same thing when somebody else can use that? So we are in a climate crisis right now and we don't have the luxury of not acting on it. I have a hybrid car and so for three years now I've been consuming about half the fossil fuels that I was before. One thing that I do though that I think you can do is try to reduce your plastic consumption. Plastic is produced from fossil fuels and this industry is a huge polluter. So where possible try to find substitutes for plastic. And here's why we need to do this. In Kansas City, you can recycle your glass in these big purple bins that are all over the city. And those are called ripple glass purple bins. And um, that glass will go into being insulation, which is wonderful. But glass has the ability to be glass bottle again. This aluminum can can be a pop can again. Paper can be recycled and become paper again. Same with cardboard, it can be a box again. But plastic, like a water bottle, a one-time use water bottle, will only become something like a parking bench or a parking bumper or a um, bench to sit on or um, maybe a deck. And all of those things are outdoors. And I'm sure you've heard of microplastics. Plastic will never become a usable substance in the environment again, but it does break down into smaller pieces. And this causes problems in our oceans and ecosystems and harms wildlife. Um, it's also getting into the soil and air, believe it or not, and eventually into our food. So, and much of the plastic that we think is getting recycled is ending up in other countries. And if you watch KCPT's Plastic Wars done by Frontline, you'll see that that's true. So try to buy um, products where you can in glass instead of plastic, like mayonnaise or pickles. Uh, you can buy in bulk to reduce packaging. You can um, take these to the produce section and get all your produce. It's fully washable with no plastic. Also during this COVID-19 thing, I am using my own cloth bags. Uh, don't let anyone guilt you into taking plastic. You, this goes right into the washer when I get home. And we obviously can't be 100% plastic free right now, but what we can do is reduce as much as we can. I don't buy individual juice boxes. Our juice is bought in these glass bottles, or you can get it in the um, tubes that are in little um, concentrated juice cardboard things. Uh, it's much less packaging. Also check this out. Instead of a big plastic uh, laundry soap bottle, our laundry soap comes in this little cardboard sleeve. And this is uh, True Earth Eco Strips. There's 32 loads in this. It's wonderful. Also, I support the organics industry where possible. It is more expensive, but it, it's all healthier for your body and healthier for the environment. So I got to end this video. I'll hope and pray that you can do some of these things. You can do it, and there's so much more. So if you want more, contact me. Thank you. Good luck. Love you guys. God bless and stay well. The third thing that we might consider is to develop. Develop the environment around us. Carol has some great ways to show us to develop our environment. Now here is one of the opportunities we created right on our Country Club United Methodist property. Half of the west side of our church property serves as a community garden. We are at the beginning of our seventh year of these raised bed gardens, and uh, they were made from our Easter offering seven years ago, and our precious friend Rusty Klein built them. We do know that wood rots, and that's exactly what we have going on here. Can some of you have the opportunity to help rebuild this bed? 
maybe uh, you have some leftover lumber. What could be a better way to help our neighbors than to grow fresh, pesticide-free produce? During the first five years of this garden ministry, we grew fresh produce to give nutritious vegetables to inner city food pantries. You'll be able to read about our current efforts in this May uh, church newsletter, The Connection. At the north end of the property, we have built a Monarch way station. We hope the way station will help to preserve the monarch butterfly and to try to create a nurturing environment for bees, butterflies, and other pollinators. When this area is in full bloom, it's truly lovely. The church recently mailed a packet of flower seeds to us uh, to help create brightness in a world that needs all the brightness and hope we can help create. I can't wait to plant the, z the red zinnias in the way station. See these beautiful forget-me-nots that came as a result of a volunteer? I love them. Here are more things that you can do to benefit the environment. I don't think there's anything better than uh, planting of trees. We have uh, uh, quite a beauty here. Now I want you to just, let's go looking up there. It's about 80 feet of yellow poplar, poplar and it is, um, was planted on the second Earth Day in 1972. Imagine that in that amount of time. It is the fastest tree growing tree in our area, in our state that about uh, trees being a gracious blessing because of uh, shade and, and uh, uh, the breathing uh, that it gives to our earth, uh, the eating up of carbon dioxide. Uh, there are trees that are better to plant than others. Uh, this is more of an ornamental and I think my maple is uh, not particularly hard wood. Uh, hardwood trees are really the best option if you are going to plant. We can protect the best that we can this earth that we have received by not littering or dumping waste at inappropriate places. So here we are in my backyard and I want to suggest that there are lots of wild lands in uh, Kansas City that you might enjoy. Uh, hiking, that bring friends, and okay, there's my wren. <laughs> this uh, would be an opportunity for you to to get out and enjoy some of our fabulous trails and wildlands. And we can help in restoration projects, get involved in some way, like the Blue River cleanup days or other times when we might be able to lend a hand in cleaning up our environment. There is an area called environmental justice, and that has to do with how many people are poor and hungry in our world. Gary and I sponsor through a Christian group called Compassion International, two little boys at the rate of $38 a month. We pay for all their food, their clothing and everything that supports them in their schooling. Their, um, this little boy is Wilbur Antonio Poros Lupera, is from Colombia, and my little boy who is Noratum Uroy from Bangladesh. And uh, we are very proud of the fact that we can keep these little boys uh, provided for. Corinthians, I'm sorry, first Philippians, we read, um, these fine words. Philippians 1 verse 5, he who began a good work in you will carry on to completion until the day of Christ. My heart is joyful today that we can share in this Earth Day time together and I hope that we will take the opportunity of sharing Jesus Christ wherever we go. He cares deeply for us.
and for the world we live in and wants us to be good preservers of the environment. I want to thank Holly and Carol and Gary at one place for sharing during this time of sermon and celebration of Earth Day. I hope it does bring to us some ideas of possibilities of things that we might do, not trying to burden us or to bring guilt upon us, but to think of new things, new life, new ways that we might participate. You know, again, pursuing these things out of the love for God, not because we're following some fad to be green, not because we're trying to be trendy or politically correct, but out of love and adoration for God. Never think that you should care for our environment so God might accept you. God already accepted us and loves us. Instead, say, I'll care for creation because I've been accepted, because God has changed my life, and because I realize that I've been placed here in this wonderful world. God's green earth is a wonderful place to live, isn't it? Let's honor God by representing God well and by taking care of this earth which God has given to us to live. Will you pray with me? O oh, Creator God, all we have to do is look around and we see the marvel and wonder of Your creation. Help us to live our lives in such a way that we show respect and care for this gift that You have given us. We do it out of our love for You. And we are so grateful for all that You have done. And may our lives be a reflection of your love in this world. In your name we pray. Amen.
It is so good to have you with us in worship today. About this time in all of our worship services, we prepare ourselves for an offering. But as we prepare for that, we also think about those things that we might take from this service as a result of worshiping together today. There's three things that I would like for you to consider in this next week or months ahead as we think about our earth and how we might find opportunities of making it better. The first thing is, will you participate in the Blue River cleanup? I know it has been postponed from the April date, but there will be publicized a new date, hopefully in the fall. If you're willing to do that, please remember it. Mark it down. Will you learn how to consume less? Are there some things that you are currently doing, but maybe there's some more things, more possibilities. Take some time to think about how you can consume less. And finally, will you find one way to develop the environment in a positive way? Maybe as Carol has done by planting trees or doing something to develop our environment. So since we cannot receive our offering physically today, I just remind you once again, if you can, to send your offering to the church through the mail, 400 West 57th Street, Kansas City, Missouri, 64113. Or you can go to the Give button on the web page, and you can give that way. Some people also give through their bank bill pay, and we appreciate all the ways in which you give and help us to continue in our mission as, uh, at Country Club Church, even though we're not able to gather together. We're thankful for all that you do. And now will you join us in our final hymn together. Oh, 
was good to have you this morning as we celebrated Earth Day. I hope this week you'll have the opportunity to get out and walk around your neighborhood or some nearby park and see the beauty of our earth in which we live, see the spring that is breaking forth, and rejoice in God's great creation. And may it remind us all of our responsibility and possibilities of caring for God's earth. Hear now these words of the benediction. Go forth in God's name. Go forth in peace. Go out knowing that we are made in the image of God. And through that image, we can care for all that is around us, loving God and neighbor in all that we do. Amen.